I'm going to show you how to make the matrix raining code effect using Power Director. It's time to take the red pill. First thing we need to do is create the text using a free photo editor called paint.net. I'm going to go to file, new, and we're going to make a small canvas for this. So we'll go with the width of 100 and we're going to go with the height of 300 and we'll click OK. We want to zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. Now I'm going to go down here to the layer section. We're going to click on add new layer. We're going to click on this background and we're going to click on delete layer. Next, we're going to change the color for our text. So we're going to go over here to the color section and we're going to go to more and then we're going to click on the switch or swap colors. And we're going to go down to opacity and we're going to change it to 40. Next, we're going to click on the text selector button. And we're going to go up here and choose our font. Now, the font that we got is called Matrix Code NFI, and we got it from defont.com. So I'm going to click on this drop down arrow, and I'm going to type M until I see Matrix. I'll left click on it, and then I'll go to the font size, and we're going to choose 22. Now we're going to left click near the top of this to start writing our text. And we're just going to type the first few letters of the alphabet. We're going to type a letter and hit enter. Now you can barely see the letters right now because I made them opaque, but don't worry about that. We'll take care of it in a second. Next thing we want to do is click on the magic wand so we can select the letters. And we're going to go up here to the mode or flood mode and we're going to select global. Now we're going to go to view and we're going to zoom in some more. Now you should be able to see the letters pretty well. Now, you know, they are opaque. You should still be able to see them. So now we're going to click on the text and select it. If it doesn't select it, then we're going to go up here and click on the tolerance alpha and it should select the text then. Next, if you want to, you can go ahead and zoom out. And now we're going to select the gradient tool. And we're going to go down here to color again. We're going to change the opacity all the way down to zero. And then we're going to swap colors again. And we're going to change this black to green. So I'm just going to type in the RGB values that I want to use. Now we can click on less and close this out. And now since we already have the gradient tool selected, we can go ahead and place our cursor at the top of the letters and you should be able to see the marching ants around the letter. Hold down your left mouse button and drag this down and it'll create a gradient of green to opaque. And then you can let go of your left mouse button. You can do file, save, and it'll ask you to pick a location to save the image that you're creating. Now, make sure that it is creating a PNG image because a PNG image is a PNG image with a transparency. So that'll mean that the letters will be visible, but the background will be transparent. And you can go ahead and give it whatever name you want to give it. And click on save. Now we can click on OK. If you're finding this video useful, click clack that like button. It gives me an indication that I'm building an audience by creating helpful content for my viewers. Now let's head into power director 
and bring this matrix raining cold thing to life. So the first thing we need to do in Power Director is left click on Particle Room. Now we want to come up here to create a new particle. You want to go to the location on your device where you save that text. And here's mine. I'm going to left click on it and click on open. Make sure that you're on the advanced tab. When you get to this section, if you're on the express tab, change it to advanced. If you don't, you won't be able to do the steps that I'm about to do. So we want to go ahead and go to the emit method and we want to change that to line. And then we want to go to the particle style and we want to change that to scale. Next, we'll go down to the section to modify parameters. So we'll left click on this little carrot and the emit rate needs to be 30. The max count needs to be 200. We'll leave these all the same and we'll go down to speed and speed we will change to 35 and speed variation. We will change that to 800. We can close this part up and now we want to go to color. We want to enable color and we want to make sure that our playhead is at the beginning of the particle that we're creating. We want to click on the color selector and we want to choose green and click OK. Now we need to enable the color keyframes. And we'll move our playhead all the way to the end where the last keyframe is. We'll select color again. And this time we'll select white and we'll click OK. And you want to place your cursor over this circle in the middle until you see these crosshairs. Hold down your left mouse button and drag this up to the top left of the window. If you can't see the top of the window, you might want to change it to a different percentage just to make sure that you're getting all the way over to the side and the top. Now this is only going to cover the left hand side. So we need to duplicate this and add a new particle. So we're going to click on add new particle object and we're going to go through all these steps again. And then we're going to place this one in the middle. Then we're going to do that one more time. And we're going to place the last one at the upper right corner. Once you're done, you can go ahead and click on OK. And you want to give it a name. And click OK. Now you can see a quick preview of what the effect looks like. So it looks pretty good, but I want to add even more flair to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on it and drag it down to track one. I'm going to right click and copy it. I'm going to go to track two, right click and paste. Go to track three, right click and paste. Then I'm going to drag each one of these over about a second from the beginning. I'm going to left click on the top one and I'm going to click on the end button. It should take my cursor to the end of the first clip. I'll left click on an empty part of the track. I'll click on split and then I will left click, hold down my control key, left click and I'll hit delete. So now I have three instances of the particle that I created and I'll play it back and let you see what it looks like. If you want to make an Indiana Jones intro, check out this tutorial. 
Don't forget to smash my face to subscribe. Hit me up with your comments and drop me a like down below.